Hi, my name is Sharon Clampett. I'm a professor at Inter-American University of Puerto Rico, and I've been teaching online for over 20 years. And I know that some of you have been asked to or thrown into the online learning environment with, uh, because of this COVID-19 crisis. And I also know that many of you have been told, here's some tools you can use without any really uh, any training. So I thought I'd just create a few uh, short videos for using one of those tools that you may have been offered, which is Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. I'm going to do several videos, but this first one is just to get you started, just you know, a quick tutorial to get you familiar with how you access that tool and how you use it. Set up a session and you're on your way. So I hope it's useful and I, and, um, I hope you enjoy it. So let's get started. The first thing you need to know is that if you're using Blackboard, you're going to add Blackboard Collaborate in your course. And some of you may not have it in the courses. It depends on your university or your school whether they have included that tool in your uh, course design or not, or whether you have. So we'll start off with that, and I'm going to go. And the first thing you're going to do is add Collaborate Ultra. Now, some people enjoy, uh, some people prefer to have it in a separate folder, and like I have it here, with a folder I've created, video conferences, to separate it from the different materials. But this is a complete online course and not necessarily what you might have. So if you want to create a separate folder, you go up to the top where it says build content, create a content folder, give it a name, uh, virtual meetings, virtual classroom, video conferences, whatever you like. I've already done mine here, so I'm going to go into that folder. And now we're going to add Blackboard Collaborate Ultra to this folder. Now it's important that Ultra part. Where you're going to do that is here where it says tools. So we have build content, assessments, and then tools. And why I say Collaborate Ultra is important is because the older version, Blackboard Collaborate, uh, the original, is still available in the tools option and it is much harder to use especially for the students so if you don't see it right away go to more tools and look for blackboard collaborate ultra now we're not currently using blackboard ultra in our uh, institution so i don't know if maybe they've eliminated the old blackboard collaborate if you're using uh, blackboard ultra in your university but if not, anyways, you add the Collaborate Ultra tool. Okay, now I've already done that, and I'm going to go in so you can see what it looks like as a professor. And it's coming up, and um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this so you don't see it. We can start over fresh. Let's delete it. Okay, so this is what you'll see when you first go in. All the courses will have a room created already at the top. And you can use that room. That's no problem. You just tell your students to go into that room. Um, you can actually give them a link to that room. Um, copy the guest link. And we'll talk about the dial-in in a minute. But I recommend that you create a session so that each class is recorded separately. You, you, do, you can record record it separately and they can access the courses according to the dates, for example. So we're just going to go ahead and create a session. And I'm going to give it um, intro, intro to Collaborate Ultra. And I'm going to put 2020 so that you know that it is this year in case you access this 20 years from now and know that this is a very old video. Now automatically, I have access to the session and I could just stop right there and join the session. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, what's, what's in this configuration that you as a moderator have, okay? As an instructor in the course have. So the first thing here, you see an anonymous dial-in. That allows the person to use their phone to call into the video conference. It will be audio only. They won't be able to see any presentations or the videos of any other person. 
But when you have a student who does not have a good internet connection or has no internet connection, this may be their only option. Give them an option for them to dial in, phone in, and be able to listen to what everyone says and to be able to contribute um, by audio only in the session. The next little uh, button we have here is for guest access. And I do, it, it is automatically uh, checked. And I do recommend that you uh, leave it that way and copy this guest link and send that to your students. That's the easiest way to get started. They just click on that link and it automatically takes them to the session where they write in their name and they're, and they're connected. So it's less complicated than telling them to go into Blackboard and then uh, into the video conferencing folder and then click on collaborate, then look for the session and, and so on. So this is a real easy way to get started by just sending them that link. The next section is the dates. So I'm going to leave that as it is, so you can. Uh, but you can see you can adopt, uh, adapt the start date and the end date. It doesn't mean that the video conference is going to cut off at that end date. It just becomes uh, the session is no longer available for people to log into. You can have a no end session where it's just open all uh, semester long, uh, where students can go in and chat with each other, and and video conference with each other without. Uh, having a formal session or you can create repeat sessions so that it, it creates a session every week for example you do decide uh, how early you want to allow participants to enter so for example 15 minutes is a typical entry date you know just giving people time to get in and log in but for that first session the first time they and you <laughs> use the, the, the tool, you might want to use 30 minutes so that everybody can get in and check their microphones and solve these browser problems and just kind of, you know, get over that first uh, impression of, of logging into this type of tool. Next, you have the, the session settings. Now, automatically, all students not you, you're, you're a moderator as an instructor and the person who created the room, you're a moderator. But all the students will be, and anyone else that you give that guest link to will be a participant. Unless you want them to be something else. If you want to change everybody to presenter, which gives them some more privileges, or moderator, which gives them the same privileges that you have. And I will be doing another video on some advanced um, applications for using Blackboard Collaborate, but just for the basics, leave it in participant and do click on allow recording downloads. That allows you not only to see the recording, but also to download it to your computer. And that's something you might want to do as a professor to kind of have evidence that you actually did interact with your students during this um, period, this abnormal period where you're supposed to be teaching online and um, but also the students can download it and review the material again. Or if they weren't able to get in that specific time and date, then uh, they can go in later and download it and take a look at it. They don't have to download it. They can also just view the recording online. Participants can share audio, their microphones. They can share video so everybody can see them. And you can decide if you want to allow them to be able to chat during the session, chat with each other and chat with you, sending messages. And you can decide if you're going to allow them to draw on the whiteboard or not. And these uh, privileges can be given and taken away uh, in the list of attendants uh, as well. And finally, again, you want to allow attendants to join the session by using a telephone. If that isn't clicked, then you won't be able to have this audio only participation. Now, there's a reason for that. The audio-only participation does not identify the user. So they don't type. There's no way for them to type in their name or, or to give a name that will appear on the list of participants as a person with a name. They show up as user numbers one, two, three, four, five, or whatever. And you don't know who they are unless they identify themselves in audio. Important for taking attendance, right? So now I'm just going to save the session. That's it. We're done. And there you have it. It's created. 
If you see over here to the right hand side, the little uh, circle with three dots in it gives you some options. You can see the telephone number, which you should probably give to your part your students where, when you invite them to the session, as well as copying the guest link in order for them to have that as well. So you give them a couple options. If you can't go in by internet, then call in by the phone. It's okay. I'm going to go ahead and click on it to go in the session. And you can see here it says join session. I hope we're in this session now. It's, you can see that it is starting to, uh, to log in. takes a little while sometimes, especially if there's a lot of ch uh, load on the internet at that time. Okay, so now this is the main screen of, of Collaborate Ultra. And you can see it's no big deal. There are three main parts of the screen. The upper left-hand corner has a menu. The lower, the lower right-hand corner has a menu. And then you have the main controls in the bottom part of the screen, bottom center part of the screen. And I'm gonna start there. So number one, it has your status and your settings and it allows you uh, to see how, what your experience is like, that means your connection. You can mark yourself as a way, if you have to leave to go look for some materials or you pick up your pencil off the floor, or, uh, go to the ladies or the gentlemen's room or you can leave the session there as well. It has emoticons for you to express happiness and sadness and all that. And you can also indicate to the speaker that you would you please go a little faster or a little slower. Although I, I generally don't even see it if they ever do that. You can also ask them questions during the session. You know, how many of you think that this uh, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra is awesome and they can answer that they agree or they disagree. That's in that first icon there. The second and the third one are the most important icons. It's the microphone and the video. When you see that there's a slash through it, it's muted. They can't hear you. So a uh, rookie mistake that you start talking and giving client not paying attention to, to all the texting that's going on in the chats. Professor, we can't hear you because you've forgotten to unmute your microphone. If you just click on it, now you see that when I talk, the microphone gives me my level. If I move farther away, it gets a little bit lower and so on. Now this microphone uh, muting has another function. It, it's connected to the video. So if I am talking my camera and I have my camera activated, which is the next icon, it will automatically shift uh, the my camera to, to up front and center, as I say. But that also means that if you have a student with a microphone open and a dog starts barking, it'll shift to their video. And if uh, they're typing something, it'll shift to their video. Or if they have their speakers on so loud that you're hearing yourself in their speakers, it will also uh, shift to their video. So you need to give them instructions on, you know, when one person is talking, everyone else should have their microphones in mute. Remember when, when it's your turn to talk, remember to unmute your microphone and so on. The camera also has to be uh, activated and it will give you a little preview. You're not going to be able to see it here because my camera's already occupied with this uh, recording, but it'll give you a preview and before you share it with the rest of them. So, you know, make sure your hair is combed and, uh, that there's nothing weird behind you uh, while you're while you're doing your presentation. I'm going to cancel that. And then you have the fourth icon, which is for raising hands. Now, this is something that in a normal classroom you might not pay too much attention to because you want well, some some of you do maybe, but in 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 a really dynamic kind of classroom, you may just allow all of people to spontaneously participate in a discussion. In video conferencing, because there's a little bit of a lag that they say something and it takes a while before it is heard by everyone else, they may interpret that as, as a hesitation or a pause, uh, which gives them permission to take the floor. 
and um, in video conferencing, then you get a lot of, of overlapping, unintentional overlapping speech. So it's one of the maybe the drawbacks, especially if you have a large group, then you need to uh, ask them to raise their hand for a turn uh, to participate. If it's a small group, you can manage pretty well and they pretty much learn to wait until the person stops. But if not, you get a lot of, um, oh, oh, no, you go, no, you go, no, you go, no, you go. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Uh, and it'll, you'll take up a good 15, 20 seconds with the go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so that's the, ma the basic controls here. That's what your students and you need to know just to get started right away. Now, let me go and talk a little bit about the menu that's in the upper left-hand corner. And that is where you, as the moderator, need to start the recording. Rookie mistake, you get halfway through your, your uh, presentation, your class, and you remember you haven't started the recording. Uh, if that happens, Oh, and it happens to me, even after all this time, I get involved with the students and forget to start recording. Once you uh, start the recording, go back and kind of do a summary of what's been discussed prior to pressing the record button. It's no big deal. Everybody understands you're getting used to this. Um, so you'll, you'll start and stop the recording with this menu. This menu also gives you the option to use your phone for audio. So, for example, if they're having difficulties where with their audio, which sometimes happens when they use the uh, the, audio, the headphones with the little microphone down here, sometimes you can't quite get connected. Um, they can continue to use the camera for video and be able to see the presentations and the other people's faces, but they use their telephone for uh, audio. And if you click on that, it'll give you the number that you need to dial in for that. Okay, that's that's all you need to know really for that menu. Now let me go down to this menu. I'm just going to go over this menu briefly because in another video where um, I'm gonna, it gives you some more advanced uh, options. This is the chat room. Um, if you type something here, it will show up uh, here. And as, when there's more than one participant and you're the moderator, it shows up as a little, like a little pop-up bubble here in the screen. The next icon is the list of people who are participating in the video conference. And you can also see what their, their experience is like. If they're having connection problems, it'll be in red. This is just like a cell phone indicator or battery indicator. If it's uh, low and red, it's, they're having problems. And in the uh, controls, the attendee controls, you can't see it here because I'm the moderator. Um, you can actually uh, uh, assign someone to be a closed captioner. I have never done that. <laughs> um, I, don't, I, I guess I should try it sometime, but I haven't ever done that. But it does allow you to control the microphones uh, and the video from here. You can mute your students' microphones. If somebody has, you know, left their microphone open and it's and you're getting a lot of background noise, you can you can mute it for them instead of uh, telling them to do it in front of everybody. The next option is for sharing content, and I will do a separate video on this. But it allows you to share a whiteboard, and if you have a stylus of some kind, it's like drawing on a chat on a whiteboard. Um, you can share uh, an application screen, including. Uh, YouTube videos, uh, you can, uh, and I'll show you how to do that in that more advanced video. But here you can share your entire screen or a certain application or a Chrome tab. And you can share files. Now the share files is probably what you'll use the most. Uh, that is where if you're going to use any PowerPoint presentations, that's where you would um, upload your PowerPoint or any images or any PDF files. Those are the only types of files that you'll be able to upload. And PowerPoint is actually converted to images and, and brought up. So none of your effects or transitions will work. So make sure you keep that in mind uh, when you're preparing the uh, presentation. Now, the next, uh, the next um, button here is for settings. It's a typical little gear for settings. Here you can help, uh, you can set up 
camera and microphone, your students will also have access to this. Again, an option to use your phone for audio. And then there's these notification settings. Every time someone joins or leaves a session, you'll get a little balloon here, a little pop-up uh, notification here, letting you know, or audio or um, a collaborate uh, pop-up notification, which is a little less uh, intrusive. You decide if you want to see that or not. It is kind of helpful because you can tell when somebody has been booted out because of a connection problem, you know immediately, go, oh, I lost, I lost them. <laughs> Also, the chat messages. If you have activated chat and you're allowing them to, do, to use the chat while during the presentation or during the conference, the session, or the class, you decide if you want them to be able to, you know, if those little pop-up windows are going to be there. They, if there's a lot of people in the class, it can get pretty intense. So you get a lot of beep, 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 and lots of little <laughs> balloons popping up everywhere. So you decide. Um, I have sometimes eliminated the no, the audio notification because it, it distracts me. Um, the pop-up, I kind of leave it because if they have a question, you see it immediately. If not, you have to keep an eye on the uh, on the chat. Uh, window and see if anybody's asking anything. Um, if they raise, if they use the raise hand button, which is in the, the lower, uh, it, it also comes up as a little pop-up window in the, in the top here. And that's a good thing to leave on there because that's where you lower their hand and you know who's coming next and who's coming next. But you can also see it in the attendance uh, window. You'll see the, the hands uh, popped up in the order that they raise their hands. And that's about all you need to know for that session, for basics. That's it. That's how easy it is. It's really nothing very complicated. So when you're done, ready to leave, you need to go back up here again, stop the recording, uh, and then you can exit the session. When you leave the session, it asks you how was your, how was your audio and your video. Kind of gives a little feedback to collaborate in case they need to adjust something on their end. If not, just skip. And you're logged out, and now you can close that browser window. And you go back to Blackboard again. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that it helps you uh, understand um, what you can do with your students during this COVID-19 crisis. I will tell you, um, my experience in online learning is that more than anything else, contact with your students, communication, continuous communication with them, and they, com their communication with their classmates is essential to them feeling um, that they're not alone in this, that this is not an independent study, that they are in this together. Encourage them to ask each other for help and to coordinate uh, working together on assignments if you want them to and other activities. Communication is key. If you can't communicate with them through video conference, well, write them by email. If they're younger children, it's recommended every day, write to them, write to their parents so that even though we have social distancing uh, because of this COVID-19 virus, it doesn't have to feel like social distancing in an online course. I would love for you to write me and tell me about your experiences. Um, let me know. I'm on Twitter as S.A. Clampett, and I'm also in uh, Facebook as Clampett's Continuum. I will be putting up this video on YouTube, so you may be able to comment there as well. I just love to know if you're if you're using it and how it how it went. How it went. We'll be back to normal soon. Well, this is my normal. <laughs> so, have a good one. Feel free to write me or, or uh, send me email if you have any questions. I will. Here's my email address: is sclampet at ponce dot inter dot edu s c l a m p i t at ponce p o n c e dot inter i n t e r dot edu good luck